resume button here. Now Greg mentions here he's not getting the video, just the audio. Uh, Greg, are you able to see the screen that says Lynn Saint-Germain Relationship Training Manager on the screen? If anybody can see that, I'd, I'd appreciate getting that in the, uh, in the chat over on the right there. So Greg says yes. Hopefully everybody else can see it too. Perfect. Oh yeah, we're getting lots of answers now. So it's all Excellent. good? Perfect. So uh, take it away, Lynn. It's all yours. All right. Thank you so much, Joelle. So uh, again, thank you so much for joining me today. A uh, very rainy day in Ottawa. Hopefully yours is a little bit better. Uh, so um, before we get started, I just want to probably answer the most important questions that many people are asking is that why did uh, Korea decide to make such a major change? And uh, when they looked at the technology that was already existing, I know a lot of people have been using it for many years, but over the years, a lot of people have also asked us about new features and certain things that they would like to see uh, with the application. So when they looked at the project plan of creating all these new tools that people wanted, then we're, we're talking about three to four years of development. So they just realized that in the long term, it would be uh, cheaper in terms of, because of course, time and, and money, uh, a lot of that is required when you're doing development. So that's why they, they looked around and looked at the products that are already on the market and decided on this particular one. So I'm gonna go through some of the, um, the things that you are to expect in a transition, whether you have uh, gone uh, to uh, the new um, application or not. So the first thing, uh, so the templates that you have been using in web forms, uh, legacy. So I will refer to the, the current one as legacy. Uh, so there, there was some issues with BC uh, at the beginning. So now from um, what our project managers told me, all the templates, the personal templates, I've been transferred over uh, yesterday. Uh, however, if you have been using templates and they've been sent over, because again, there's it's a completely different technology. So a lot of people are expecting it to be an update to web forms. The only thing that really is, is kept is the name. So we're talking about different technology, different platform. So once these templates are actually uh, transferred over, the clauses in them are not going to be inserted. So you're just going to have to uh, reinsert them, whether they're clauses or conditions. I do believe in BC, you might call them conditions, uh, but that's, uh, that's the way it's going to be. So the, the actual grouping of forms will be transferred, however, not the information that was in it. Your personal clauses or what uh, was called custom clauses in uh, legacy will be transferred over. If your office did pr provide some uh, brokerage clauses, then they would also be transferred over automatically. So the big one here is the transaction kits that we're creating in WebForms legacy for the last 18 plus years. Um, so because we haven't deleted anything in since that since the beginning of, of web forms, uh, obviously the storage space is at very, very full. So we're trying to get members to start cleaning out their own individual um, storage areas, uh, as you can see. Um, so the thing is that, that once this, that document is actually sent over to uh, the new web forms, it's actually only going to be a flat file. So you um, we are suggesting to keep the, uh, the, the kits that you want to actually keep as a reference. You're not gonna actually be able to work with that transaction. You're still gonna be able to open them and even copy and paste some of the text inside of them, but it's, you can't just take that transaction kit and then keep on working with it. So you're still going to have to go on an individual basis. If you can see my next screen here, so this is from uh, Legacy itself. So on the left-hand side, so you're gonna open up a, a kit that possibly you wanna keep. On the left-hand side, it says send kit to Webforms 2019. So what I, I suggest is anything that's over 10 years old, I wouldn't even bother. First of all, the technology and the forms have changed so much. Probably maybe the last year or so, you would like to keep some of those transaction kits but you're still going to have them to do them individually. So that's uh, one thing that you still have till the end of the year to, to do uh, before they decide to discontinue uh, WebForms Legacy. So once they are transferred over, so this is the interface from the actual uh, transaction desk. Um, if you haven't seen this yet, then of course it's not gonna be familiar to you, but all your transaction kits that you are going to transfer over to uh, 2019 will be in that area, which is called transactions. 
And there's another uh, interface here just to show you uh, uh, right at the bottom here where it says document. So this is actually the forms that were inside that transaction kit that was transferred over. So you can see, I can still see those forms. I can even open them up. Uh, again, they will be an um, uneditable PDF, so you can still open them, look at them, copy and paste some of the text inside it if you wish uh, in order to transfer them into a brand new one. So I am, uh, this is the end of my PowerPoint. Let me, I think uh, I'm gonna try this new share. I think that's gonna work, Joel. I think we're good. All right, okay. So again, for those of you that have not been to, uh, to look at the new web forms, this is what you're gonna be seeing. So it is a different approach because now we're talking about uh, a dashboard approach as opposed to uh, with web forms um, legacy, it is simply an application for forms. And of course, there is the e-signature component to it, but here there's a little bit more tools that uh, you have access to. So I'm gonna go through uh, all of these tools and then we're gonna go into a more practical way and show you how to create those transactions. So first of all, this first page that you see on our dashboard, this is your own customizable workspace. At the top here, you see a little lock. So if you unlock um, that particular uh, icon here, you can see it opens up a uh, menu of widgets. So widgets are actually shortcuts to different things that you like to do on a regular basis. So as you get comfortable with the application, you may want to move some of those things around and add them to your menu because you wanna do uh, quick access to them. Um, the green ones on the right-hand side here, uh, they have different types of, um, of options as well, uh, that you can, again, just drag them into your page. And they're also resizable, so you can just kind of move them in different sizes. And, and again, these are completely adaptable anytime you wanna go back and change them. You may simply have, wanna have the basics on your screen with just a transaction, access to your transactions and maybe create transactions. So there is a default as you're gonna be opening up the screen, but Essentially, you can do anything you want to this page, then make sure to lock it back up in order to uh, that you don't move all of these blocks here um, by mistake. So on the left hand side, we're going to see here there is a, a menu of those different tools that we're going to go through uh, in this session. So the first one, as I said, is your dashboard. The next one is your transaction area. So as you're gonna get comfortable with this application, you also you're gonna realize that a lot of times you can do the same thing in two different ways. So on my main dashboard, I did have a widget for creating transaction, but I can also create my transaction right from here. So if you look on the top on the right-hand side, there is a plus uh, menu with the word add underneath. So if I just hover over it, you can see it says to me, I can create transaction right here. So I could do it from my widgets, which is what I've kind of got comfortable in doing, but you can also create them from here. And this is where all those transaction kits that will be sent over from um, legacy will also be seen. So there's different things here. You can, you can see the, the um, basket icon. Uh, you're going to see that icon a lot because it helps you when you're doing multiple of something like adding multiple forms, multiple uh, clauses, for example. You can sort them as well. Uh, and then there is also the option to have them as a grid as opposed to a list. But again, these are uh, personal options. So going back to that left-hand side menu. Uh, so right underneath, we do have the forms. So the forms are the ones that you're, you're used to seeing. These are the same forms that uh, were pro provided by, uh, some of them are board forms specifically from the boards, or of course from uh, B-Syria as well. So we'll get back to those a little later on. Underneath, uh, something else called documents. So documents is actually your own virtual storage space. So this allows you to upload any kind of documents that uh, are not web forms. So they could be uh, PDFs, Word document, there's also images, there's about 10 different formats that you can just store here. Uh, there is no uh, limit in terms of sizes of uh, the space that you have. So this can serve as your own, again, personal storage space. 
There is a task tool right underneath here. So I'm not going to get too much into task here, but uh, what this allows you to do, especially if you're working um, in a team environment in your office, you can actually assign a task to somebody uh, with a deadline. So in this case here, I just called it get report and I could put a deadline on it to assign it to someone that uh, could be an admin staff. It could be also another agent that I work with in my office. Can also use it as a reminder to myself. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so right underneath the broker tools as an individual agent, you're not going to see that. It's only if a brokerage actually purchases additional uh, other tools that are available to them, but uh, you, won't, you will not see that because you won't have that same permission in any case. Uh, right underneath, there is a faxing tool. Um, that allows you to create a fax cover sheet. Um, I did ask them why they didn't have that. Apparently there's still um, many um, agents, especially in the United States, that do use still the fax. Uh, so this would create a customized um, fax cover sheet for you. If you don't use it, don't worry about it, but it is just an option if you're still using the fax technology. Right underneath, uh, so the contact management system. So that's something that we didn't have in Legacy that we had, uh, I guess, a smaller version with just the lawyer's uh, library. But in this case here, you will have to start creating um, your own contact list. If I just open up that option right here and click on create contact. So it, it opens up a number of different types of lists as well. So you can start creating them um, as you're going through your transaction. Unfortunately, you can't upload um, a CSV file. If you are, however, um, with Google Contacts, you can see here there is an option to import existing contact. They are integrated with Google only. So the rest you would have to uh, do them manually. So the next uh, option on the left-hand side here is the setup menu. So the setup menu is a really important page because a lot of the things that you're used to seeing in legacy on the front page where it says template, clauses, et cetera, will be under this menu and there's additional uh, things as well that we'll look at. So the first one is your preferences. So user and office information, that's whatever is uploaded from your board. So you wouldn't have to uh, change any of that. Uh, the email signature option, uh, we did have that in Legacy as well. So it just allows you to create a signature block so that every time you send an email through web forms, you can, uh, I would add your uh, contact info at the bottom. It's very similar to what you would find in any other uh, e-signature products. Uh, sorry, I mean email products. Uh, so the, the next one, which is a new one, is about branding. So... It does allow you to add a photo if you are using uh, the fax um, tool. If not, right underneath, there is an option for a personal photo. Now, I did try that. And every time I send an email to someone, it adds my picture. So I don't know if that's something that you would like, but definitely the one right on the bottom here allows you to add a company logo. So that may be something that you would like to add to uh, your correspondence. So going back into our setup menu here. So the second one is program settings. So when we talk about settings, we're talking about all the global settings, such as, uh, for example, choosing a font. You do have access to about eight or nine different fonts now. So if you want to uh, set a specific one as a default, uh, you can also set the, the size of that font as well. And, and a lot of these settings, I would encourage you to go and take a look. And as you're, you're getting more comfortable with the application, then you'll want to customize it. You may want to disable certain things and you can just come back here and do it at the global level. All right, so underneath, uh, there is notifications. Um, as a general rule, obviously, you would like to be uh, notified if your participants are clicking on the links you're sending them, your transaction, et cetera. And underneath, the same thing applies if you've assigned a task to somebody. So you have to decide how, many, how much notifications you would like to receive if you're using the task tool. So clauses, uh, so this is where your personal clauses will be created. Um, I will get back to the clauses a little later on in the session, but this is where you will be actually uh, creating them. Type management. Uh, so first of all, there is again a number of things here, but uh, I guess the quick one that I could explain to you, 
I, I did show you all the categories of contacts you could create. If it happens that uh, you had, there's one of them that you're looking for that's not there, just click on the plus sign here and then you can create a customized one uh, for uh, your own personal needs. So going back into our uh, setup menu here. So checklist manager, uh, there is a possibility of creating checklists if it's something that you may want to work with and send them to your, uh, your clients perhaps. So, and again, it's a tool that is there for you if you wish to use it, you can try it out and see uh, if it's something that you would like to use on a regular basis. So the templates, um, if you're not a template user in Legacy, again, I'm always encouraging people to use templates because they save you so much time. Uh, so you can create them from here. I did have a widget as well uh, to create templates right from my dashboard. And there's actually another way to create templates or again, three different ways to, to actually um, for the same, the same uh, end uh, result. Uh, but we're gonna go back again to templates a little later on. The next tool here, sharing. So this is one that uh, has been asked for for a long time. So that uh, people that work in teams could actually collaborate together working on the same transaction without having to ask uh, everybody's credentials. So right now, that's, uh, sometimes it's kind of an issue. It was the only way was to get somebody's passwords and then to work into their documents. So the sharing tool still gives you the power to control uh, who, first of all, can see your documents, who can just read them, and who can uh, have full privileges. So you do have still the, the, um, the, the power to control who can actually work on that document. So we're going to get into that sharing tool a little later on. So the rest of it is mostly admin. I'm not going to worry about that for today. Uh, so right underneath here on the, on the next item on our menu is the App Store. So the App Store is uh, essentially the same as you used to see in Legacy. It is about uh, linking your electronic signature product, depending on which one you have. So they're still the same ones that we have available before. Uh, so AuthentiSign, for those of you that are AuthentiSign users, if you weren't aware of, uh, they're actually, uh, um, it's their um, native e-signature application. So it's already integrated in Transaction Desk. So some of the things will be made easier because you're already an AuthentiSign user and you're gonna probably be more familiar with the, uh, the user interface because it's, it's very similar. So they couldn't um, um, provide you with the, the credentials both uh, to use AuthentiSign in Legacy and in the new one. So what's gonna happen is that if there's a flag that uh, if after you've logged in 10 times into the new application, like they're, they're, I mean, they're assuming that you're ready to move on to the new one. If you want this to happen quickly, if you're ready to switch to the new one, you want to send your intent to sign, contact a Lone Wolf. There is a help desk number. If you don't have it, um, I guess we can, you can provide me your, uh, with your information. I can send them to you later on. I don't have it with me right now. Uh, but uh, just contact Lone Wolf and they'll just move over your credentials and you can just as easily start working with intent to sign in 2019. If you are a DocuSign or EasySign on any of these other products, you will have to link it. Uh, for you. you can see here that I'm already linked to DocuSign, so that's why mine says unlink. Uh, for those of you that may be next one users, it is right underneath here as well. So essentially just add in your credentials and it's usually a pretty quick uh, uh, relink before to use your e-signature product. So the next one right underneath is our support page. So this goes directly into the CREA help desk. Obviously in some cases, some boards do have their own help desk. Uh, however, if not, then of course you can try to contact us if um, uh, you wanna be also uh, reached by phone as opposed to by email, we can do that as well. We do have uh, people available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, so I guess it's about 5, uh, 5 p.m. your time. Uh, and at the bottom of the support page is a number of links here to videos and uh, help guides, recorded webinars as well, sometimes help because you can just stop them anytime you want. And some of the training videos are actually subject specific. So sometimes you may just want to be refreshed on maybe creating templates, for example. So you can do it that way as well. So I'm not seeing any questions. So I am just going to keep on going unless uh, 
Joelle can see them, but I... there, uh, there actually was one in there, Lynn. Uh, oh, okay, I didn't see just it. about importing the contacts um, from Legacy. Are you able to do that? Uh, no, we, we, well, Legacy, first of all, was only uh, lawyers that we had in there. We didn't have a real contact system at all. It was just to, to have the lawyer library. And unfortunately, because, again, it's different technology, we can't import those in there. So they would have to recreate them uh, with the new system, with the contact management that's in Transaction Desk. So like I said, the only way that you can import them is if they're in Google Contacts. Does that answer the question? Perfect, okay. thank you. Okay. All right, so let's get back to our dashboard and start creating transactions. So as I said earlier, uh, there are different ways to do uh, something, something similar. So here, like I said, I like to create my transaction right from the beginning, right from my uh, dashboard. So I'm just gonna click on uh, my widget here. And the same thing as you did in the legacy, really all you really need is just the name to get going. So they're no longer called transaction kits, now they're just transactions. So I'm just going to um, give this a name uh, with today's date. Obviously you're going to name it something that makes sense to you, maybe the, uh, the person's name, address, etc. cetera. Uh, and normally I would always, always prefer using a template. And again, to save you time, I'm not gonna do use it for that first example because some people are still wanting to do it uh, a one transaction at a time, but also to show you how the process actually works. So I'm gonna leave it at none. Uh, I am going to create a sales transaction right underneath where it says import data. So select source, that's where you're actually going to be choosing uh, the board you are with in order to get a uh, MLS number to auto-populate some information. Let me just find this one I just found this morning. So if you don't have an MLS number, do not put a, um, a board because if you put a board there, it's gonna be trying to find that data. Just leave it on select source and then you just can keep going uh, if you want to. So just don't put anything if you don't have an MLS number. Uh, underneath here, there is options to put yourself um, um, a role. If not, you can just leave it at neither. Uh, it really depends. Again, that's not mandatory. Uh, there is the option of using the wizard. So if you're not familiar with wizards, they're actually a preset um, uh, steps of creating, uh, in this case, a transaction. So there's five steps. If it's the first, first time that you're going this application, I would encourage you to use that wizard. So it takes you to the steps a lot easier if you're not sure where to go. Uh, eventually you're gonna say, oh, I don't need that wizard. You can disable it into your uh, initial settings and then you won't even see it again. So I'm just gonna leave it on for now so that we can go through these steps and click on create. All right, so now we're in that page where it's actually uh, specific to that uh, transaction that I'm trying to create. So you can see at the top, I have the title, uh, listing number, information, et cetera. So the, the pages, of course, here, uh, there's a lot of details here. There's a lot of fields. Do not be intimidated by them. Um, you don't have to fill them all. And some of it, you might have the information just later on. Uh, but if you don't fill them out, then it's not going to do anything different. It's just there. If you wish to add the information, obviously a lot of um, information that you add here would also auto-populate in your forms um, as you go through your transaction. At the top where you see previous and next, that's my wizard. So there's five steps, this particular wizard. So it's, again, it's gonna take me through those five steps of how to create uh, my individual transaction. On the right-hand side, you see this menu that just opened up. Uh, and these are the components of my transaction. So essentially what the wizard does, it takes me through these components. And one day when I, I won't even need the wizard, I'm just gonna go directly and work with uh, that menu on the left, on the, sorry, right-hand side. So it, it's just, it's the same exact, the same things, except now with the wizard, it just takes you to some of these basic five steps. So I'm just gonna keep on the wizard for now. So the next page is the same thing. There's a number of fields. Again, you may not have this information right away. Just come back to it, go into the detail section and continue adding this information if you wish. So step number three, it's about your contacts. So 
because this is a live um, a live listing you can see here it's picked up some of the information from the people involved in this transaction uh, so i'm not going to click on anybody that i know uh, or at least the, uh, the the realtors here but if for example i want the crea trainer vc so that's obviously me if i click on the actual name it opens up my contact information sheet. So this is how I can start building my contact list if I want to, uh, again, add these individuals that are already in that transaction. So you can start doing it this way. And then now we move to the next step, which is the form. So obviously if I had, um, uh, you've been using a template I would need to do all the selection, but for those of you that still prefer to do it this way, let's just go and click on the plus sign here in order to add some forms. So I am going to add, there's different ways that you can actually add the forms. Uh, there is no numbers, I guess, in BC forms. Uh, Ontario have, uh, have seem to have numbers, so it's a little bit different. I'm not as familiar, but I'm going to, whoops. It works better when you don't have any typo. All right. So I'm going to add a few forms here. And then when you I want to add these forms in that transaction, make sure that you uh, just select, put a, a check mark in, on the side here in order. And, and depending on how many pages that you need for your, your contract of purchase and sale, uh, then you can just decide from here. You can also, you'll be able to add additional ones. So one of the, um, the, the concerns I get that we've had for both BC and Ontario is because they, uh, in legacy, we could add additional pages automatically. So again, because this was a custom feature that was in legacy, it was not transferable. However, it is going to be uh, reprogrammed, I guess, into the new application. So right now you're gonna have to pick and choose depending on how many pages that you think you're gonna need. But like I said, you'll be able to actually add um, or even remove some other ones. So let me just pick some more forms. All right, so I'm going to add a few more here. Uh, so obviously, if um, some of them do not make sense to you, uh, you'll have to excuse my, uh, my ignorance in terms of not being a realtor, but I'm just going to add a few here. That, and of course, you're probably going to have a lot more forms than, than I would. I'm just going to add a few of them here. Uh, let me add some FinTrack. And again, having a template. So let's go here and we'll add... We have four forms for now. So uh, let's just start with that. Uh, so you can also start, uh, if you look on the, on the left, sorry, left hand side, there is uh, the uh, thumbnails. You can actually move these forms in different positions here as well. So if I wanna make sure, but of course my, my uh, the actual residential contract at the top, but then you can just move them around. Now let's click on next in order to finish up that transaction. So this is a document area. So remember that um, I showed you your document storage space. So this will allow you to add additional document should you have them. Again, not mandatory. Uh, so from here, you do have a number of options. You can drag them in here if you happen to have uh, a document that you uh, have on your desktop. You can upload directly from the laptop anywhere. So this is this little icon with the, uh, the box here of files. This is going directly from your storage area. It is also connected to some, um, there's three or four different cloud systems as well. So you can also take a look uh, there to see if you want to actually attach some of these documents. So I don't have any documents in here. I'm just gonna close this up and click on done in order to just complete that transaction. So I have the basics of my transaction. You can see on the left-hand side, the detail overview. So that's the name and, and of course the listing information and the forms. And if I had any documents, I could put it at the bottom. They would see them at the bottom. So different ways that you can go and uh, start editing the forms. You can click on the forms menu if you want, or just go directly into the actual document. That's what I, I, I just prefer to do. I just click on the, the title of the form and it opens up the document right away. All right, so uh, going into this menu here, again, a little bit more options, a little bit also very different. 
so I have to tell you, uh, as Legacy is, uh, it is uh, a responsive design. That means, depending on what device you're working on, this menu will look a little bit different. In this case here, I'm working with a laptop that's not very big. Uh, so in some cases, if you're working with a big screen, you might see also the names of the, uh, the actual menu items. So if you don't see them, uh, just hover uh, long enough and you'll see the label actually appear. If you're not sure what the icon does, then just hover and then you'll see them. And you can work, uh, you know, uh, because a lot of people now are using their tablets as well to, uh, to do these transactions. So it's gonna look a little bit different whatever size you're using. I've seen it done on, a, on an iPhone, so it's quite small, but the menu items, the icons will be there. They're just gonna be very, very small. So let's go quickly through some of these options here. So under the file menu, I do have new. So new allows me to go back and add some more forms. Maybe I forgot to add a form. Uh, underneath, open form looks into that basket of forms that I've inserted. Uh, so save feature, you can save it on the screen. Obviously, every time you get out of uh, this, this form or, or the tool uh, and go to another tool, it will save as well automatically. There is a copy option as well for the actual form. Uh, erase is just for the actual text uh, inside of the forms. There's a watermark option. So if you would like to uh, maybe have your document as a draft before, uh, when you're working with your clients, you can just put a draft on it. And then of course, just remove it once everything is in completed. Uh, so remove will remove this particular uh, form that's on the, the screen. There's a print option right here. And the next menu, which is called send, there's quite a few options here that you can do right from the screen as well. So email, fax, uh, documents, that means sending a copy to your document storage. Every time you see that pen, that means that your e-signature is linked. If you don't see that pen, it's because you are not. So you should be able to see that if it's properly linked. There's also the option for markup. And we're going to look at that as well because it's at the top as well. Next option is your font. Uh, so font, like I said, you do have a bit more options here. I did uh, put mine as a default, a Courier Bold. Uh, and again, you're gonna have to do some testing and decide which one uh, you think works the best. Um, and, and of course, especially if you're printing them out, you wanna make sure that uh, it prints out very well and clearly. They do have a color palette. However, I would just recommend to not even touch it. The default is black. And even though there's some interesting colors here, it's probably not gonna look very good in print. So just leave it in black. So in terms of sizing, uh, remember that size, uh, one size fits all. So if you are going to pick six, is gonna be very small because and then it, of course it applies to the whole form. Um, and, and again, it will also depends on what uh, font you decide to choose because it will look different. The sizes will be different depending on the font. So I encourage you to uh, just test it out. So clause, uh, this is where you access your clauses or condition. We'll get into that a little later on. Um, so the next one here, though, looks like the little house. So this is where you can actually also open up and go and, and click on another form in order to work with it. So I'm not going to do that right away. Uh, so the next one with the, looks like a book. So this allows me to go and go on the different pages and the, and the actual open form. The ambulance here, the icon, essentially is your a link to the help menu. Again, other videos that you have access to. There's a zoom in, zoom out, depending on what uh, size you want to have on your screen. Uh, the next one, the markup tool, I think it's going to be very useful to a lot of people because over the years I've heard uh, many times that they would have to take their documents and especially the signed documents, they would have to take them uh, perhaps um, uh, into a PDF expert, for example, make some annotations to them and then bring them back and, and, and then resend them through uh, e-signature. In this case here, you can, especially if you have authentic sign, it's even easier uh, because you'll have the document still um, uh, in, in the, the actual transaction desk. But even if it's sent out uh, for signature, it comes back. And, and again, this is also uh, provincial regulations. I, from what I understand, uh, sometimes it is uh, possible to do these changes this way. Sometimes it's not. So you'll have to, to decide uh, whether it is uh, legally possible. Uh, but at least you do have these tools here if you want to do any strikeouts. Uh, there's lines as well as highlighting this, uh, the redact basically obliterates a whole bunch of text if you want to. And then of course you can remove 
anything uh, that you have done on your page if you're done with it. Uh, so right here, I do have, uh, again, um, another link to send to my e-signature. I'm not going to actually do it right now because it will send me directly to DocuSign. Uh, but if, again, if the pin appears, that means you do have access to it. Uh, so right here, there is um, add page and remove page. This allows you to add more text uh, into uh, where your clauses or conditions would be added. So let me just move down. Again, I apologize, I'm not as familiar. I'm just gonna move, there you go, right here. Just move this up here. So uh, right here under terms and conditions, um, this is where you would start inserting your conditions. So for here, uh, you just add to seeing a big button that says insert clauses. Uh, all you have to do is, is just click in that big empty space and then there's a green highlight that will appear. And then you, by clicking at the top here where it says clause, it will uh, give you the option of looking into uh, your menus. So the personal clauses, of course, if you have some, I'm just gonna add the only one that I've created here. And again, same thing as we did for the forms, just add a check mark to it. And then we're gonna go back into, uh, so the office clauses would be the brokerage ones if you had some, I don't have any. System clauses essentially are the provincial ones that uh, are provided by BCRIA that you've worked with uh, several times before. So I'm just gonna, again, just to pick a few of them. And same thing as we did before, again, just add them into that basket. They have different uh, categories that you can choose from. I'm just gonna add another category, maybe for disclosure, all right. All right, so same thing as we did for the forms, if I click on that basket right here, it tells me all the clauses that are in here, sorry, or conditions. If it's all good to go, I'm just gonna click on close and click on okay, and then it just simply adds the document, sorry, the text within that space here. So you do have access to another page. This one I had picked was the two pager. So if you see, so what the, it actually is going to do, it is going to, um, if you do have a lot of clauses, but um, it, it, it will tr still try to resize it to make it fit. But if you have a lot of them, then of course it's gonna become too small. So I encourage you to just copy and paste them and move them to the second page. Like I said, eventually they are going to uh, reinsert that uh, uh, interactive edition of these, these uh, forms, the second page. But in the meantime, and of course, if you do have a template created that makes things even faster. And from here, you could potentially change the font as well if you want to try them out. And it's uh, quite easy to just manipulate the text. They're no longer uh, uh, like a big block. So you can just kind of drag them around and you can still, of course, make some uh, manual changes as well. And type in just because it is uh, just like a text box. All right. So I, I don't know if there's any questions, Joelle, because I can't see them, but please interrupt me if uh, there is questions. Sure, I actually do have a couple. Um, okay. So one was from Lori, she's asking, how do you view the forms before you add them into the kit? Okay, well, I'll have to get out of here. You can see them when you're actually uh, selected them at the beginning, when you're in the, um, uh, in the actual forms area. So once we get out of here, I'll show you. Perfect. And the okay. other question, do you, do you want me to run through the other question just now? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, this is from Jeff and he says, will we, will we be required to use this ver version before the add remove pages option is built in? Well, I'm hoping that it will be done before. That's, uh, I, 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 they haven't given me, obviously our, right now the priority is to uh, switch all the boards and, and all the provinces over. Uh, but I'm hoping that it will be created before it is discontinued. So, I, and again, I have no timeline for this, but definitely is the priority number one of changes that we will have to do one. So in the meantime, like I said, you can still do them. I know it's a little bit more, a little bit more labor uh, to do, but uh, it's still definitely, and again, if you have a template, it will th make things a lot faster, but hopefully they will be able to uh, recreate that feature before uh, the end. And we did have one more question from Shelly. Pardon me, she says, will the clauses automatically go down into page two if page one is filled? Uh, no, and that's what I'm saying. This feature was available in legacy because it was created 
custom for it. Actually, it's both BC and Ontario that have uh, these types of, of, um, of forms because a lot of other provinces is completely separate forms. So it was not an issue. So this is the actual feature I'm talking about. If, if you have too many clauses on the first page, you're, you're gonna have to uh, move them manually, just copy and paste them and put them on the second page. So at the top here, that's why we had this feature where it says add page and remove page. So if, uh, like for example, I did pick a, a two pager this time, but if it happened that you are missing space then you can add another one, but definitely if you have a, um, let's say you pick three, but you don't need all three, make sure to remove that third page because it is going to be calculated uh, in the amount of, uh, of pages. You can see here is two of seven pages, but remove it if you're not going to be using it. Any other questions, Joelle? That's it so far. All right, so let me just, uh, I'm just gonna save this. I'm just gonna stay in this document just for a few more minutes. So obviously I would go to different forms, add the information that I need, and then now it's ready to proceed to the next step. So we saw earlier that uh, we could do several things from, from, uh, from the main screen, from uh, when the document is actually open. So again, if I click on that pen here, it would send it directly to DocuSign. I don't wanna do this because I don't wanna leave uh, web forms. You can also do it right from here at the bottom, this other menu under the file menu as well. Uh, no, I'm gonna send it through email from here. So oh, just before um, I, I, I go here, so for the e-signature, when you're using the feature right off the screen, it only sends this one, the document that's on your screen. I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, uh, the ones that actually, when you can do multiple, or maybe you just don't wanna do it right away, but you'll be able to do it later on. All right, so from here, this is pretty standard. Uh, just sent by email, pick and choose the forms that you want. And then of course you have access to uh, your uh, recipients right here or they will retain the ones that you've used before. And that's, again, this is pretty standard of what uh, you're used to doing for emailing. Uh, so the option that we have here now is a link or an attachment. So really the difference between the two is um, uh, it's about the size of the documents that you're sending out. If you're just sending a form or two, usually it's not a very big document. It's not an issue. You can set it as an attachment. Uh, in the case that you may be sending up to 10 forms, a lot of these forms are several pages, I would send it as a link just to make sure that on the other end, your, um, the, the people don't have any issues uh, into receiving these documents. So that's really what it's all about. It's about the size of the documents itself. Lynn, can uh, I interrupt you real quick? Yes, of course. As Jeff has also asked here, what's the frequency of autosave while you're creating a form? And can you change that in a setting? Um, from what I understand, no, you can't change it. They, they told me it was five minutes, but uh, I want to actually ask them to change that to put it a lot shorter time frame. Uh, but you can't, because uh, you can actually disable the whole thing. I don't think you want to do that, obviously. Uh, but um, I, will, I will make a request. I have made a request for them to change it to a much shorter time frame. But every time that you get out of the form or change uh, to another form or get out to another tool, it will save it. Any other questions? That's it for now. Thank you. All right. Okay, so let's move on here with our email. So allow editing of forms is the same feature that we did have uh, in uh, Legacy. I don't think it was really used, but it seems to be something that some members want. So it is still there. Uh, expiration date. Uh, as a default, there was a seven day uh, time limit uh, in Legacy. Here they just kind of allow you to decide if you want to have an expiration date or not. It really is up to you if you don't want to have this link just sitting in somebody's email box for, for a while. So you can just give them a deadline and perhaps just send them a message. And then just go ahead and send and, and that's good to go. All right, so um, I'm just going to make sure here. Okay, so everything is, uh, and again, I could send it through e-signature. I'm not gonna do it from here, but I'm just gonna exit this document now and move on to the other part. So uh, just before I forget, I want to, there was a question here on those forms. If you're looking uh, right into the documents section right here, so for example, right in here, 
Uh, if you're looking at the end of the menu, there is a preview option right here that you can uh, actually look at the forms uh, before adding them in. Perfect. And Grant has asked how long until we can't use legacy anymore. Uh, like I said, it is going to be discontinued uh, sometimes at the end of the year. They haven't given me a specific date yet. Um, let's just say maybe mid-December uh, because they will probably be before the holidays. But And it, there will be some warnings that will go to all members. So we're not just going to cut it off. You're going to have the time to actually know that, that it's coming. So Great. And John has asked if it's possible to rearrange pages. The pages uh, within the form, the form itself, or? Uh, she says, for example, move page one to page four. So I'm assuming within a specific form. I am guessing there is um, a tool that's actually called a, a slicer that I actually managed to move the pages around. So that's something that, pro I, that I think that's what they're, they're referring to. So the, and that's under the markup tool as well. So they could, if they need to move pages around, they would be able to do it uh, within that slice, slicer as it's called. If I, let me just reopen this up here. I don't want to mess up our document, but um, if we just open this up here on the markup tool. was this other option let me just check and again I don't want to uh, spend too too much time okay I know like I'm sorry the, the, um, the like I say it's, it's called a slicer so first you're gonna have to look it up just to make sure that uh, I know it is available for you to change certain things here I know in documents it was available so uh, for whoever asked that question please look up the slicer it's under the markup tools and then that's the way that you'll be able to change those, the pages within the forms. So I guess that's all I can tell you for now. Uh, I don't want to, make, to spend too, too much time. And there was, uh, are we, yeah, we're just kind of nearing the end here. All right, so, uh, so we'll, we'll carry on if, unless there's other questions. So I've created my basic transaction. So now I want to show you some of those shortcuts uh, and again, it's always about templates in order to make things a lot easier for you. And let's go back here under our setup menu right here. All right, so uh, we have here their clause menu. So that's pretty simple. So your personal clauses that you already had in uh, uh, Legacy will be transferred automatically. So you don't have to do that. Um, it's only the transaction kits that you'll have to do it yourself. So under my personal ones, I did a create a folder. Obviously you can create your own folders. And then that's how you create a clause. It's pretty simple. Just add in a, a title, for example. And then of course you can type in the text if you want or um, copy and paste it. This is always a lot faster or use some of the text from uh, some of the provincial clauses as well, and then save it. And then of course, they're just available to you at any time as well. So that's pretty simple. Uh, so right underneath is templates. So, and again, I can uh, create my templates from here. I can create it uh, from uh, my widget. I'm just gonna do it from here. It will take me to the same place. If you did have templates uh, in your uh, in legacy, then it would be, you would be able to see them here. And again, but they would, uh, you would have to just reinsert some of those, um, the text in it, the conditions, if you already have uh, conditions in it. So let's create a brand new one, create a transaction template, of course, under that plus sign right here. So this tool over here, uh, so as an individual agent, you're only going to see, uh, to be able to create your own personal templates. However, there is an option, like right now I'm a super user, so that's why I see this option of office. So we have that, uh, the ability to be able to designate one person in a brokerage to be a super user and create uh, templates for the whole office. 
Uh, so, and a lot of brokers are using this, especially if you have a lot of new people, they're not sure which form they need, what conditions to add in. So they create the templates for everyone and you can have access to them. So if it's something you think your office would benefit from, please contact the CREA help desk and make sure that uh, you let them know which individual you want them to become that super user and then they will assign that permissions. All right, so I'm just gonna create a personal one. In this case here. And, all right, and for those of you that don't use templates, uh, the concept is to create a model of, of each type of transaction that you do. Obviously there's, there, there's different ones that you may be doing. You can do a listing one, a uh, condo sale perhaps, maybe you do commercial, maybe you do agricultural. So you can create a, um, a template for every type of transaction that you do. So, and again, it's all about saving you some time. Description, you can put one if you want, uh, you don't have to. Click on save. All right, so now we're gonna just start creating our templates. There's a lot of, again, these components here, but really what you wanna add is the forms in here. So I'm gonna go directly to the forms option, click on add forms. So exactly the same thing as I did earlier, I will go and add these forms uh, that I'm looking for into my transaction, the ones that I use all the time. So, and I would recommend that you put uh, any kind of forms that you think you may need, but you may not need it all the time, but put them in your template so you have a quick access to them. And again, it's all about saving you some time. And let me just add another one. All right. So just, I want to be closure here okay and once again you can click on that basket making sure you have all the right forms and again you probably will have a lot more forms than i would click on add right here and you can see the process is very similar to what we did earlier so if i can i can also move them around here in the different position and move this addendum down here and now i would like to actually look into my contract and add these conditions that are always the same now I'm just creating the, the, the template, the model itself. So if I, I'm just gonna go quickly and add some conditions in here. So once you've done this uh, once, then it will save you so much time in the long run because you don't have to do this over and over again. So all the basic, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, Len, just while you're doing that, if I could ask here, uh, this is, I believe, from Grant again. So he says, if you're creating a template or adding a form like a CPS, do you have to select all the pages individually or, or will the new program add them all? Like, so all, each page. Um, each page of the form? I believe so. Well, the form comes with so many pages, so it depends what, what they choose. You're choosing the actual form. So yes, so the, whatever page came with it will be added. The whole form should go in. It's just if you want to add individual pages within that document, correct? That's right. Okay. Like right now, I'm just adding some of these conditions in here. These are just my basic conditions. But yeah, the pages themselves will be the same as if you're creating a basic transaction. And within your template, mm -hmm. if the forms are updated from the provincial authority at that point, would mm -hmm. your forms be updated automatically or do you have to do something manually? From, uh, from what I understand, I haven't been able to try it, that, but uh, uh, they, are, they are not going to be automatic, but you will be getting a notification that the change. And, and again, this is a feature that we want to bring back into this application. So you will be notified that it uh, that that form is no longer um, uh, up to date. And Cheryl here is asking if you would please scroll down through all the pages in the CPS that you're currently working on. Okay, so that's my page two. Page five. Is there anything specific she's looking for? Not in her current question, but Cheryl, maybe you could expand. Well, this is dated February 20, uh, 2019, so it is up to date, if that's what she's looking for. 
She just wanted to clarify that all the pages of the contract were there. So perfect. Oh yes, once you pick the form, it is the way that the form is actually created. So, so I'll just complete that template unless there's any other questions. I will still just save it and exit. And I want to show you how these templates work uh, once they are created. And again, it's all about saving you time. So let's go back here uh, to our dashboard now that my template has actually been created. So now I'm creating an actual new transaction. All right. So now I am going to use that template I just created right here. Okay, so now I'm actually creating a transaction from the template. If I do have my MLS number, I would add it. Okay, we'll use the same number here. So I'm not going to use the wizard because now I'm familiar with it. I don't want to use it. And, and of course, the wizard is something you can disable again from uh, your initial settings. Click on create. So obviously you would be preparing all of this information here. If, you're not, if not, go directly to the forms in order to look at them. So you can see here, I don't have to go and click on plus and start uh, adding all of these forms because I've used a template. And if I had, uh, well, you're probably gonna have a lot more forms than that, but let's just say I didn't need the disclosure of interest, for example, I can just delete it from this particular transaction. Uh, it doesn't affect my initial template unless I actually uh, change it myself. So any of the transaction that I create from the template is completely adaptable. I can add more forms as well if I need some. And if I'm going to be looking into my uh, residential uh, contract, then my conditions are already in there as well. So it's just to show you there's these two steps that you don't have to do over and over again because everything kind of stays in here and then you can still adapt it to, you can see how all my conditions are here and I can still go back in and make more changes if I want. I can add more clauses or conditions and so on and so forth. So you still have a, a basic shell of a transaction, but again, it, it saves you from having to, uh, to save all of these or search for all the forms every time and conditions. And then I can just of course proceed as, normally send by email, et cetera. Any more questions, Joelle? Well, just um, Lori mentioned earlier in, uh, in the chat here, she says, you know, do we have access to this simultaneously, to both systems simultaneously? And I said, yes, but what, what are the limitations to that? Can you jump back and forth between the two systems, the legacy and the new? So you can, you still can do it. So if you have, um, Let's say you have an uh, open active transaction in legacy right now. I would not send it over because it's going to become a flat file. So you won't be able to edit it. Uh, if you want to start with a new one to try it out, then definitely you can go back. See at the top, uh, maybe not on this screen, but right here. Uh, see, it says here, it still says legacy version. So it will allow you to go back and forth. Um, however, again, you can't really work with that same transaction back and forth. Either you leave it in legacy until it's complete, or you can start creating a new one um, in 2019. And in terms of your e-signature, again, for a tent to sign, you have to decide whether you wanted to still keep it in, um, in uh, legacy for a while, or if you want to actually start working with it in 2019. DocuSign is uh, and the other products, it's a different story because they're just a link. So it's not as much as an issue because it's not integrated um, as um, AuthentiSign is. Any other questions or? Uh, Don says, if my original template has clauses, will the clauses still be there if I make a copy? Uh, what, do you mean an act making a duplicate or? I'm not sure, Don, perhaps uh, we can either what, unmute you or perhaps you can add a, a little bit more explanation, but she, she's written out, if my original tem template has clauses, will the yeah. clause still be there if I make a copy? Uh, well, yes, if you're using the duplicate option, which there is, but if you're talking about a copy from that template, yes, definitely. So that just as I showed you when I opened up the transaction that I created from the template, 
all my conditions were still there. Okay, so she, she creates a template with the clauses and she makes a transaction duplicate, the clauses will be there. Yes, absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, now, that's the whole point is to be able to save that, that time as well. And just to jump back a little bit, so Grant has come back to when you're choosing a form to add to a kit, so for example, the CPS, all of the pages of the CPS will go into the kit, correct? Yes. Okay, I think where the confusion lies, Grant, is that on here, so do you see on your screen right now, Lynn, it says CPS residential two pages? Oh, uh, yes. I think, mm -hmm. I think that's why there's confusion because that oh, has I see. Okay. multiple pages. Yeah. Okay, so this particular feature, let me just go into the where the forms are. So, and again, this is to, to help with um, the fact that they're not, no longer interactive um, documents. Oh, where was it again? CPS right here. Well, again, did now it's the same thing. So because it doesn't, the, 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 sorry, the second page doesn't add up automatically. They're allowing you the, the, the choice to decide, well, I'm going to need two pages of conditions or three pages. So it's only about the condition page only. So everything else will be there. Does Perfect. that make more sense? That does, yes. So there's multiple okay. options, but but if you were to choose, let's say, CPS addendum one page, yeah. you could still within it add additional pages, correct? Yes. When we were on the open document at the other end, there was two options there. There was an add and remove, and this is exactly just for that form, that particular section of the form. Perfect. Because if I do pick four pages, for example, and I don't need that many, I have to remove them because it's still calculating them. So. Makes sense. All right. And Phil was looking for a little bit more clarity with regards to AuthentiSign. So he said, if you're using AuthentiSign, can you jump back and forth, I'm assuming between legacy and new? No, you can't. And, and again, it is because AuthentiSign is completely integrated uh, in there. And they, they did try to be able to allow you to, to use it on both, but uh, it, it wasn't working out. So uh, you have to choose whether you want to keep it for now in uh, legacy or if you think you're ready to start sending or creating transaction in a new one, then you can contact Lone Wolf and they would transfer your credentials. So uh, it really depends what you wish to do. And of course, at the end, at the end of the year, everything will automatically be uh, transferred over. But at this point, you have to choose uh, whether you want to stay, keep it in legacy for a while or in the new, in the format. So I would think that one of the most important things to do right now is to make sure that if you want to keep your transaction kits, that you start to transfer them over, correct? Exactly. So, and that will take a while, obviously, because uh, sometimes people have a lot of them and they're, I know members are very attached to a lot of the transaction kits. So uh, you do, you can only transfer one at a time. So that's why we're really asking to, you know, uh, to clean up uh, their storage space. So yes, you do have the time to do it till the end of the year. Uh, but that's, it is uh, really important. Uh, and, and again, just to reiterate, if you have an open active transaction right now, do not send it over until it's complete because you won't be able to continue editing. And one more thing I thought it might be worth mentioning and, and you may have done today. Um, I've been told that it's very important to work with the templates and not to copy from a previous transaction. Would you yes, say that's correct? Absolutely. And that's something we've been pushing uh, even with legacy because with making a duplicate or a copy, a lot of people have been doing that for a long time, but there's always the chance that you will forget uh, information from a previous transaction. So with a template, it doesn't retain MLS number. Uh, it doesn't retain some of that information that could be specific to a listing. So that's why it's uh, really important. I know there's still people just want to do a copy, but once you get used to templates, it is so much faster and there's, there's no chance of having repeated some of that information that are uh, listing specific. And if you have a super user within your office, they could perhaps be the people who are creating those templates for you. Is that correct? Absolutely, yes. Okay. I'll show you um, just an example here. Uh, if I create a transaction very quickly here. Uh, so right underneath where it says, oh, I don't have it. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I was, I was teaching in another province. So, okay. So this is where actually if uh, a brokerage actually create these templates, they will be available right here under the same menu as your personal templates. 
So I will say here office template for condo sale, for example. So depending on how they decide to call them, but they will be accessible exactly the same place. So if uh, an agent starts working, you know, and creating a new transaction, uh, and again, it will save people a lot of time, but this is, they'll be accessible exactly at the same place. And they would just need to contact the member support desk or the, uh, the, I'm assuming the broker would have to do that. Would exactly. Yeah. Desk? Cause as a default, usually we would, you know, give it to the broker, but in a lot of cases, it's not the broker that actually will create it or at least manage the, the, the trend, uh, templates. So that's why we need to get a permission to uh, allow you know, one individual to do that. And Janice here has asked, uh, in legacy, you had the ability to send forms from web forms to various electronic management systems, such as transaction desk. Is that still the case or is, is well, that still an It is right here under, um, well, if you're a transaction desk through a tent design, I'm not quite sure what she means. She says yes. Because to send by email? Is that what? Uh, so yeah, in legacy, you had the ability to send forms uh, to various uh, electronic manage management systems, such as transac transaction desk. So I believe that is by email. We're straight. Well, well, yes, definitely, especially transaction desk. That's that's what that is. It's all incorporated. So definitely, uh, it's it's if you already have that, that it's much easier. Not a problem at all. Oh, well, one thing that uh, I did um, mention, I was going to show you was sending multiple forms uh, through e-signature. So let's just go back to our dashboard. And while, while you're doing that, Vince has okay. asked if you could repeat your comment about the super user and who they contact. Uh, okay, so the super user uh, would be technically the broker, but whoever has permission to allow someone to create these templates should contact the CREA help desk at support at CREA.ca. Okay, what's going on here? My screen seem to have frozen over. Let's try something else. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, <laughs> uh, so I do apologize. Sometimes these training sites don't work exactly that uh, the same way that they would from a member's perspective. Now it's cutting off my access. Okay, all right. Okay, well, I'm gonna try something else here uh, and then go back to it to see if uh, it will allow me. So the last thing that I want to show you before we actually go is the sharing tool. Uh, and again, this was a tool that people have asked us for many years in order to be able to collaborate within a team environment in an office. So you do have to create these groups in advance uh, before you can apply them to uh, your transaction. So let's go and click on plus. Uh, August 28 here. All right, so from here you can see on the right hand, sorry, left hand side, normally it would be all the people in your office that you would have a list uh, of right there on, a, on that side. And you'd be able to pick and choose these people that you work with all the time. If it is, uh, if you do have admin staff that you uh, work with, you want them to have access to your documents, you'll have to make sure that they are in the CREA system. So what you have to do is just simply highlight it, the individual and send them on, uh, on the other side, depending on what um, uh, privilege you want to give them. So let's say I want to send this person here as full privileges. I want to make sure that they have access to uh, work on my document if I'm going on vacation, for example. Uh, so I can simply just add it from here, update and then that's good to go. So. Once this is applied, and you can also do the same thing uh, uh, when you're creating your template. Okay, I'm sorry, this thing is still not giving me access to my documents. Okay, I think that's going to uh, limit my options here, unfortunately. Okay, I apologize, I cannot seem to come back into my documents, okay.
I think I'm going to have to, uh, <laughs> Joelle, I think I'm going to have to let it go at here. I'm not sure it's allowing me to do any more here. No Unless worries. I, uh, this is just log out and start it. I'm just going to quickly try to log out and do it again. Let's try that. We do have a couple of more questions, if you don't mind. Okay. No, not at all. Uh, I'll just try that again. Vince has asked if there a, a notification will be sent to all agents when forms change. Um, I don't believe that comes through web forms, hey? No, it usually doesn't. It would come from the provincial association. It, even through legacy, it, there was no announcement. Well, no, that's not true. There was a, a usually they have a note in the comments that uh, there used to be at the top here. Let me just try this again. Let's see if I can get back in. Oh, okay. Oh, I do apologize. It's just not allowing me. Technical difficulties. Yes. Yeah, that's just lovely. It always happens when you go live, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but we did cover most of the uh, the features anyways that I wanted to show you. Um, and, and I know it is very different from what you're used to. And and the only way to actually get used to it is to go and practice and don't actually go in there when you're under pressure to create a transaction. Take a few minutes here and there to go and, and try it and practice uh, the different tools and, and, and don't be intimidated by all the tools that are there. Uh, a lot of it seems to be um, people get a, a little bit intimidated because there's so many things, but if all you want to do is create a transaction, your best bet is create your templates and then use them from there. It's really all you need to, to know at the beginning until you get comfortable and then you can start using uh, the other options as well. Perfect. So Marilyn has just asked us here if um, she says, can we change over now or should we wait until December as there may be more changes? That's completely up to you. You can, like I said, you can still go back and forth in order to look at the applications. The, the issue is just about your e-signature, especially if you're using a TentaSign. But if you want to go and take a look at it, you, know, you should have the link at the top of uh, Legacy where it says switch to 2019. But you also have a link to go back as well um, to, to Legacy. You'll see it also on transactions. So you can still go back and forth. Okay, and, I, and pardon me, um, we have um, one more question and I think mm -hmm. we should call it a day after that one. Um, how do you transfer kits again? So in the legacy system, there is that button over on the left-hand menu that will tell you you can transfer them to the new system. Is that right? Okay. Let me just go back to that other share. I think it's going to work. Can you see it right now? Hello. <laughs> okay. Can you see it? We can. Okay. So right here, you are going to be in legacy and open up that transaction kit on the left hand side. That's what it says send kit to webforms 2019. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Lynn. I appreciate you taking the time to spend with us today. My we pleasure. do have one more session scheduled for next week. So if uh, any of uh, the current attendees would like to join again on Wednesday next week, we have, uh, we have a whole bunch of seats available. And otherwise, uh, Lynn, thanks so much for, for your presentation. And everyone online, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. You too.